Lion Pops, Tulsa King, episode three. We're going to get to some of these plot points. We're going to wrap up a couple things too, move forward on some others. So let's talk about this episode. Right, I am Pops. Been going through Tulsa King season two. Really enjoyed the show as a whole, but I do think there's a major step down in season two. Episode three is better than episode two, but we're really not quite on track. Let's talk about a few of the details. Stallone is really kind of killing it. He really kind of revels in this mafioso thing with the suits he wears. Costume design, obviously, almost like hand picked. Like this guy's got to be like, no, nah, I'm going to look good in that, but not so much this. Plus. Obviously, he and the Dana Delaney thing finally comes to a head. He gets to, you know, have chicks line up for him, basically. So we get a brief recap, and then we kind of move forward with uh, him going through this sort of like impromptu uh, uh, pitch to basically the weed group, man. It's like it's his posse. They're in the weed store. A couple of them are actually high as he's doing his like closing argument. He's going to he's going to trial. He's got to face charges for all this stuff, and they're pitching him on all this. And I don't know. It was all right. It's fine. It was a little set up for more of a laugh than anything else and then we get goody now goody there's a good back and forth here with goody and cheeky um new york versus goody who's kind of like uh dwight's concierge and i think at this point you and the audience goody's gonna set up dwight they're kind of like this whole big thing where the kc guys are upset they're gonna have they're gonna come back they're gonna make one more offer get dwight outside obviously they're setting up a hit and then you get a quick little shot it's very subtle where Mitch is kind of taking note of everything. Now he's there. There's a little back and forth about song lyrics doing singing and all that again, but there's a quick little moment where he catches on to this. So that's going to play out a little bit later on. Then we get more just frivolous nonsense with Armand going through his divorce. Remember that? Remember Armand? He was like the drunk guy in a scene. He's like a guy that was setting up the catalytic converter theft. Everything else was from season one. It's been a minute ago whenever, Dwight confronted him in the kitchen and all that kind of, you're going to work for me now kind of stuff. And yeah, remember all that? It's coming to a head with a divorce. Surprise, surprise. So uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, here's Mitch working through uh, the group. Uh, Danny Delaney scene with Neil McDonough. So Neil McDonough is literally playing the exact same character he's played in other shows. And I wish it was not getting worse, but it's literally the point now where he's like making his pitch to her character. Like, Hey, how come you and I aren't hooking up? How come you like this slimy greaseball New York guy? And she's like, yeah, cause you're kind of slimy. It is. It's still sort of like the cosplay of the characters that he's played before. It's just kind of a waste of our time to be honest. All right, then we get this guy. So this is the homeowners association scene where this guy shows up and starts issuing fines. It happens more than once. And you end up with this guy. He's got this little fancy dancy golf cart because of this neighborhood they're moving into. I'm going to fine you $100 for trash. It's like, it's just, this is just the, the latest stupid concept that they kind of come up with. Uh, then there's a quick little comment about the lazy boy, but he doesn't really get a lazy boy. He gets some other crazy chair. We got another homeowner association guy right before the trial. And then we cut over to Armand meeting with Cal, the uh, Neil McDonough character. Now, this is a scene I think could work. And it's setting up more because basically he's bribing him off. Armand's got money problems because of the divorce. He hasn't paid up to Dwight yet. So he's really short on cash, hence the catalytic converter scheme. So Kyle's basically puts like 30 grand in cash and I'll need a favor from you in the future. So that's kind of where this is. It's all just set up stuff for future. And then we have our trial and it was just about as bad as I thought it was going to be. Stallone is, uh, Dwight is, uh, defending himself and he's having this back and forth with the little agent. And if you didn't watch season one, maybe you don't quite know that they were a thing, right? But he's going to chronicle everything that happened. Oh, remember when we first met? And remember how we went out to the strip club? Remember how you the one that took me back to the hotel? And you're the one that came and sought me out again? Hey, remember all that? Then you took a you you like took, you took a bullet for me. You saved my life. Remember all that? And then he's like, oh, and, and your honor, we're going to like not have closing arguments. And Dwight gets off. And. Look, I said in the last episode, in episode two, I thought this was stupid. And it's, it's Hollywood. It's weird Hollywood cliche. This is stuff that's so removed from our reality that it could have kind of worked in a funny sort of like off the cuff kind of way. I don't know, decades ago. But today, this is just dumb beyond dumb. Now, he he, everything is going to just hinge on him having this pitch of, 
this is what happened. I just get it as a thank you. It was never a bribe. You didn't, you, you really didn't know it was a bribe. Did you? It's just, it's a jury thing. Like you don't have to get a lot of people on your side. There's a, there's a quick, quick little hint that it only takes one person. It has to be unanimous. I'm not sure that's the case. Obviously this is again to like legalese kind of thing. Uh, if it is that even it's even an, it's even more of a reason that charges like this and all this frivolous nonsense within our legal system should just go away because it's so easy to get people off. It's such a waste of time and money and we're just getting lawyers rich. Uh, but yeah, this was what happened. He walks brief exchange with her again. And then we cut back to uh, this peeing contest with Frank Gillow's character. Now I will admit, I mean, I love Frank Grillo. I think he's done a great job. He doesn't quite pull off any mafioso, even cowboy mafioso in this. And I don't know why I'm kind of let down because he's not terrible, but I don't, is it me? You guys have to help me out with this one. I feel like Frank Grillo's character needs to have more weight about him. He only has one guy. He only has his one right guy. I feel like there's no thugs. He doesn't dress like he dresses more like a farmhand rather than a mafioso guy. So Dwight basically is just telling him, no, I'm not doing anything and just pee off. That's all. And there's all this going to be like tension between them because it's going to come to a head. And they got to go back to court. They find out the verdict, of course. And then, of course, he wins. And um, this is them telling the AG has to make the phone call to the slimy. Uh, word gets out basically through every, all, all the buzz that the, everybody got off. That nothing's going to happen to Dwight. That runs all the way to New York. And they're going to put out the hit. Oh, this is the, oh, here's the, here's the rest of the gag now, right? So all the setup with him coming out and bothering him now, it's like, oh, he sees on the news that he's actually a mafia guy. So he comes, oh, listen, don't worry about those fines. Complete waste of our time uh, with that as well. Another singing scene with Garrett Hedlund, which I did look up. Garrett Hedlund actually is singing. So uh, kudos to him. I think he really, really is good in this. I don't think he's doing original music. I think he's just doing covers. But uh, I saw a little quick little... I looked up briefly after the last episode because I think it was actually pretty good. And then there's a quick little uh, setup now with Goody that uh, that's just going to come to a head with the Kansas City thing. They want to have their meeting. And that's how the episode's going to go. Now, I want to give you a spoiler warning here if you don't want the spoiler because at this point, there's a spoiler at the very end of this episode. Overall, episodes one through three should have been just two episodes. There's so much fluff. There's so much wasted time that's not character development. Having Dwight be the butt of jokes in the end of last episode with Jelly Roll, having all this back and forth with the Homeowner Association, two, three minutes spent on the chair, two, three minutes spent bickering with the sister. We're not developing character. We're just doing things. It's just stuff that's happening. It's like, this is not a reality show. This is a drama. And if we're to have drama, characters have to move forward in stories. We barely have seen Goody interact with anything other than the phone. And now suddenly he's relevant to this final scene. Like we really don't know much about any of the guys in the gang other than just kind of like having little jabs and jokes and whatever, other than like maybe one scene, maybe two scenes at the most. Like, so we're not getting character development in the show. It's such a major letdown from where we were in the first season where so much more time was spent moving the other characters along as well. And this one just hasn't had it. So these two episodes, these three episodes really should have been two. So we just didn't need any of that extra, extra junk. It's just a waste of time with that. That's just your last spoiler warning for the end of this episode because it is sort of like the big hitch of kind of how to move forward now with the season because things have to kind of come to a head. Like we dealt with the legal stuff. We got the stuff with them moving in, the homeowner association gags, all that kind of stuff. The cow guys, he's ticked off. He's not going to get Delaney. But now this now Dwight's bedding Dana Delaney and the FBI agent, FBI agent lady, she's basically out. So we've kind of like moved different characters around and done different things before we get to the Kansas City thing. All right, so it comes out. Here's the big Kansas City guy. He's there. And basically with the phone call from earlier with Goody, you see Goody pull his knife out very quickly. And they're going to go in. You think they're going to go in for Dwight. At the last second, Bigfoot comes behind him, grabs him by the head. And that's where they take care of business. They take care of everything Goody was actually in on uh, uh, telling Dwight what was actually going on. This is all known. So here's the setup with the knife. And this was the big twist. The gun's going to come out, everything's going to happen, and they take care of business. So it ends, of course, with them delivering. There's a day to Delaney moment I told you about, and they deliver the plastic bag there at the gates for this guy to find, and he's obviously angry. He's going to want revenge. So pretty good ending. They gave us that, but like I said, there's just so much wasted time. This is like 
Disney type stuff. Content for the sake of content. Like, don't waste my time. Your shows are better than this. Like, tighten this up. Like I said, three episodes should have been two. Move things along. Don't give me some of this frivolous stuff chasing rabbits. And it's just not, we don't care about all that. We want the Kansas City stuff. We want the stress. And Dwight being these jokes, these silly jokes are not landing. The jokes in season one, what worked with season one, I think, so well, especially in the first part, even though I thought it was slow, it was Dwight having that old school mentality, being the fish out of water was, who talks like this? Who listens to music like this? You're not a man. Like all of that type of old school stuff, that masculinity stuff. Excuse me, and it walked that line between like being like the toxic male. This season is just it's like all gags, and I there's it's not nearly as engaging or as interesting. There's no social commentary. What homeowner associations are bad? Oh, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Overall, the show is good. Uh, a major step down from season one to season two. Episode three is better than episode two, and we've wrapped up. We got rid of the FBI agent and all the lawsuit non uh, the arrests nonsense. We hopefully are getting rid of. Uh, some of these other little gaggy things to get on with this whole battle with Kansas City, figuring out how New York may or may not factor into any of that, figuring out what's going to happen with the guys. Can we actually have some scenes about Bodie and have more more of this kind of stuff that actually matters? Like that's what I would actually want to see. So tell me what you guys think if you're watching the show or not. Thanks for uh, tuning in. I am Pops. Adios, amigos.